Once more, join us, won't you, here at WFBR as we embark on a cinematic journey with Uncle Nicky in another episode of Who the Fuck Cast That Guy? Hey, everybody. It's Uncle Nicky. How are we doing? Welcome to another fantastic episode of Who the Fuck Has That Guy? With me, Uncle Nicky. Listen, you know what, guys? I think I got the hang of this. You know? It's not going to be so bad. Right? We're going to get through this. Absolutely no problem. Every single one of the movies I've reviewed so far hasn't been that rough. You know? Things have been pretty smooth. Sure. Sure. I can get upset at them. And that's perfectly normal. But. That does not mean I am not having a good time, right? What can I tell you? I believe in my dualistic nature and the ability to, you know, navigate through the waters of both annoyed, but also pleasantly surprised, you know? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the next one. We're going to see exactly how smoothly this goes. And we're going to be able to manage this together, you know? I, I, I got a good feeling about this week. I really... I really freaking do. I know. I, I'm like... Hey, Uncle Nicky, it's me. I've really been enjoying the show, and I hope you keep it up, even though I know it's supposed to be a punishment. Because I've gotten some really good movie recommendations from you. Is that... Is that Sister Sarah Jackhammer? Oh, God. The nuns have found me? Anyway. Officer that stopped by yesterday, I think. Doing what? And was asking some questions about you. But oh, I God. Told him, snitches get stitches. This is and good. I shut the door on him. All right. So, don't worry about that. He did mention a movie to me. I'm here for it. Since he's a cop, I don't know that I trust his opinion. Nah. What was the movie called? Uh, Mac the Knife? Song. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Definitely not. Wait, that was what I had for dinner. Nice. Mac and me. Oh god. He said it was like ET. No. Like no, it wasn't like ET. E. 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 Like not even uh, okay. I to your opinion, yeah, you, you want to defer to my opinion? Wrong. I'm sorry, Carla. I seem to have lost you. I'm terribly sorry. Let's take another caller, shall we? Let's see if we got any other better su uh, suggestions. Do you Yo, Uncle Nicky. Hey, Sage from Chicago. Hey, you know, Sage. Send you some of that Italian beef, and uh, oh, we got to talk about the bears. Please and uh, thank you. You know, in the meantime, uh, do, do you think you could do that uh, that movie thing about um, uh, the, the, uh, the the Book of Henry? Yeah, could you could you do that one for me? Yeah. What? You, I appreciate it. No, you, uh, um, terribly sorry, but yeah, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that, so we're gonna have to take another caller. Hey, Uncle Nicky, it's me again. Sister Sarah, I, does everybody at the comment know about this? Man, the things I'm going to have to talk to Father at confession this week, it's not going to be good. I was watching Pushing Daisies, you know, where the elf king from The Hobbit uh, uh -huh. brings his girlfriend Hermia back I loved life. fucking Pushing Daisies. That was a good Friday. fucking series. Uh, and, you know, Galinda works for him. Yeah. So, my friend said he was in a film with the blonde chick who hung out with Kong on Skull Island. Yeah. I think she said it was called Book of Henry. Oh, God. No. Mm. Mm. What the hell is happening right now? I'm not okay with this. We're going to have to. Sister Sarah, respectfully, respectfully, respectfully. Uh, my, you know, my blood pressure is high enough as it is. We're going to have to move on to a different caller. All right. Yo, Uncle Nicky. Hey. It's Sonya from Long Island. Hey, Sonya. How you doing? Love you keep sending it out here, we send it right back up there to you. I'm loving you, darling. I hear you taking requests for movie reviews for that that stuff you're doing over there. Yeah. Um have you heard of the book of Henry? Uh. <sighs> who put you guys up to this? Who who did this? Who 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 hurt you? Who hurt you? Okay. Maybe maybe this next one. Let's let's give this next one a shot. Maybe this next message will save us. Hello, Uncle Nicky. 
I'm very soothed this all of a sudden. Joe hey, Joe. We met during your WFBR orientation. I remember that. Glad to hear you're enjoying your community service. Thank you. Or at least the judge is, which is how we'll interpret him requiring you to make extra episodes. I am very you serene right now. never do one of those stupid fucking podcasts or whatever, but we're so glad you changed your mind. Thank you. And since we have you here, some of the staff were wondering uh -huh. if you'd do a review okay. of the book of Henry. What? What is going on right now? Who 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 put you up to this? Did somebody hurt you? Have have threats been made? All right, it's it's Maki Mock, isn't it? Did Mock get to all of you? Like, did he tell them? Did he tell you to do this to me? Listen, I apologized, okay, for that time with a guy in the place. All right, this is not this is not cool, you guys. Okay, I I have one more message on the machine. All right, one more. Here goes. Well, hey there, Nikki. This is Mary Sue. Hey, Mary uh, Sue. How's it going, Don? You down? probably don't actually remember me, but I was traveling about I-75. This would have been a couple of years ago, and you was traveling south, and uh, we just happened to connect. <laughs> anyway, um, you gave me your number that night, and you told me if I ever needed anything that I should hit you up. Well, honey, I've got something I wanted to ask you. My friends keep telling me about this movie. It's uh -huh. called The Book of Henry. And I don't know anything about it. And I don't know if it really is something for me. Uh -huh. would, you, would you mind? Maybe if you see uh -huh. it, let me know. Like some of the movie. Tell me something about it. Oh, and that would be real sweet, you darling. I'd really appreciate that. Mm. Well, you take care now. And just know that whatever I pass a loves, I think of you. What? Bye now. I ain't no, no comment, all right? Okay, fine, fine. You know what? I should have known. I should have known eventually this was going to happen, right? I, I made, I, 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 I spoke too soon. That's what I did. You're testing me. Whoever up there is on duty is testing Nikki. I don't know what I did wrong. Was it the thing that I did in the place with the guy? Just let me, give me some hint. But fine, okay? You know what? Fucking fine. <sighs> Brace yourselves, because here we go. Today's ep... <sighs> Today's ep... <clears throat> Today's episode of Who the Fuck Cast That Guy with your Uncle Nicky is about the Book of Henry. Also known... As the movie that may have cost the director his ability to make a Star Wars movie. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, let's do this. Okay. So, once upon a time in the 1920s, this blonde who was out of work got a job. And he got a job from the lead singer and guitarist of Tenacious D. Okay. He was young, he was a scamp, he didn't know better, and he decided that what he wanted to do was look for wonders of the world. So he booked a steamer engine, and he got the blonde and himself and a crew of haughty seamen, we're going to leave that alone, to go discover things, mysteries, and record them and possibly bring them back to New York, because when has that ever gone badly? All right. Along the journey, the blonde falls for the sea captain. I think it was the sea captain. I'm not quite sure. I, I barely remember the movie. I do, however, remember this. That the blonde, the lead singer Tenacious D, and the sea captain, they all find a giant gorilla. And the lead singer of Tenacious D goes, this is going to make me millions, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to steal this giant gorilla and take it back to New York because nothing bad ever happens with giant animals in the middle of a city. Spoiler alert, the giant gorilla gets freed and runs all ragged around town, probably upset because the blonde fell for the sea captain. You know what happens? You can't choose, but I understand getting upset if you get cock-blocked. 
but you're a gorilla, okay? Maybe find other gorillas. Now, I, know, I, I realize it's hard to find other 900-pound gorillas. This is 900, no, way up there. What, like nine tons, nine thousand, nine something huge. It's a huge fucking gorilla. Like, it's, it's at least 100 feet tall. Anyway, so, I realize it's hard to date, okay? It is difficult, right? Because cuddling, you could break somebody, and let's not even get into other semantics and details. But anyway, the giant gorilla gets loose in New York, right? Runs ha ragged. Things are awful. Okay. Eventually, they stop the giant gorilla. They send the giant gorilla back to its island. I think. Maybe they kill it. I'm not quite sure. But ruins the reputation of the lead singer of Tenacious D. The blonde and the sea captain, they settle down. They have two kids. All right? The lead singer of Tenacious D, he decides he's going to pool the rest of his money. He's going to start another band that fails he ends up crashing on the couch of his lead singer's house right his his lead singer's apartment and his lead singer's his lead singer has a girlfriend all right we've laid the groundwork here is very important here goes so the sea captain he dies but not before having two kids with a blonde who moves to a really fine fucking house in the middle of the suburbs all right and so it's working part-time as a waitress, all right? Obviously has some money because you can't work part-time as a waitress and then kind of sort of devote some time to becoming a children's book illustrator and own that fine a fucking house, right? With the two kids, all right? You're raising two kids. In this economy, you're going to have to be robbing banks on the weekends or perhaps be a professional hit person. But we'll get there. Stay strong, Miggy. You got this. Oh, God. All right. So, fast forward. We got Blondie, who, you know, still corresponds with the giant gorilla because, you know, they're, they're just friends. And he, he's holding out hope. And Blondie has also become, ho ho, best friends with the lead of Tenacious D's roommate's girlfriend. It's a wonderful little world. They're all connected. It's it's pleasant. You know, it's tough to make friends as an adult. They are friends. That's perfectly fine. So, 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 you've got Blondie and her best girlfriend, and they hang out on the weekends and nights, and sometimes they have a glass of wine, sometimes they play Gears of War, you know, like, like modern individuals do. You sit around, you chat, you shoot aliens in video games. It's a good time. And Blondie has two kids. One is Henry and the other is Peter. Peter. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, try not to try not to hear it every single time I say it, all right? Okay. So Henry's the older and Peter is the younger. And Henry is a fucking genius. And you know why we know he's a genius? Because he tells us he's a genius. Yeah. Did I mention the kid is a prick? The kid is a prick. Let's move on. Because I'm going to try not to be that mean to a child. But it's going to be hot in this situation. Okay. So, we got Henry. We got Peter. Henry starts off the movie by introducing himself by going up in front of the class. And haranguing the kid who did an oral presentation before him. And making fun of him for, for saying that he wants to become a professional dodgeball player. Two things, Henry. One. Do you know how fucking hot it is to get up in front of your peers and say things out loud when you're a child? No, because apparently you're a genius and you also, that means you don't have feelings. Okay, that's one. Two, you know what, Henry? If you're such a fucking genius there, pal, maybe you should have got up there and in the midst of your oral presentation, not only shown a little bit of emotional support for the kid who went before you, but also have suggested that maybe you would start. A professional dodgeball league. Because I hear it would do very well on ESPN Ocho. But I digress. All right. So Henry. Henry's supposed to be a really smart kid. How do we know he's a smart kid? Well, he plays chess against the lunch lady. And tells her that he's going to beat her in like 17 steps and some shit. And he plays the stock market. Lord knows where he's getting the money from. And he does all of this other shit. We'll get to in a bit. Holy fuck. So, yeah. So, he's a genius. Oh, great. And his kid brother, 
He's a dopey kid brother, but he's a fucking kid, all right? The kid Peter is a kid, all right? He's, he's, he's cool and he's emotional and it's fine. Meanwhile, Henry is just like robot boy. So, like, he doesn't show emotions or anything else. And sometimes he talks about violence being an option and shit like that. And you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, is this kid going to become the fucker from you? You know, the Netflix show? It seems like he could, you know? He's he's riding that line between, you know, Benedict uh, Cumberbun's uh, uh, Sherlock and fucking the guy from you. I mean, like, it's a fine... There's a very tiny divide betwixt the two. And the kid is, like, right on that line for the whole fucking show. But anyway, so Henry's like, ah, we're living, we're living a pretty decent life. But I play, I play the fucking stocks and I'm doing pretty good and it's all okay. Fucking, and he spends a inordinate amount of time telling his mother how to adult, which I'm like, fuck you, kid. All right. Now, here's the thing, okay? A lot of kids out here. They think they know better than, than adults. And I understand that. But we shouldn't be highlighting that behavior. Nor should a kid who's supposed to be super smart not have fucking empathy built in where he can kind of understand the mother's plight and where she's coming from. But I digress. So, Blondie, when she's not, you know, trying to have a career as a, as a children's book author, an illustrator, and she's not hanging out with her best friend, who is the girlfriend of the roommate of the lead singer at Tenacious D, and Blondie's not writing Kong and just updating Kong on what's going on with her. You know, she's working part-time at a restaurant, okay? Okay, life is pretty normal. It's a quiet town, or is it? Because right next door. Also, did I mention apparently they've got a bunch of fucking money? Because they live in the house directly next door to the fucking chief of police and the chief of police's daughter. Now, here's, here's, here's where things kind of start getting uncomfortable because it is implied. It is implied that there was something fishy going on, that the chief of police is doing something untoward to his, to his daughter. All right. I don't. I'm not going to get into details. I don't want to upset anybody, but I'm telling you right now, when you take a movie like this and this is the main thrust of the film, you're kind of going, okay, but you didn't develop the chief of police and you didn't develop the kid, the daughter of the chief of police. You just, there it is. There's the plight of the movie. Okay, fine. Cool. Great. So normal life, small suburb, Mystery abounds. Henry's a genius. Peter is a little bit of a goofy kid. Every so often, mom says, you gotta, you gotta actually act like a human being to Henry. So Henry plays with his brother and talks to him about Rube Goldberg machines and does this whole Marcel Marceau bullshit. And you're like, okay, cool. So the kids, the kid's idea of comedy is from when there were, there weren't talking pictures and his, his entire idea of fun is making intricate systems that have to fall specifically into place. Everything has to fall perfect or else it won't work. Foreshadowing. All right. So, Henry goes to school one day, right? And the neighbor's kid... Right, the chief of police's kid. Oh, by the way, the chief of police is that fucker from the ATF from Breaking Bad, who I wasn't the biggest fan of to begin with, but now there's a possibility he's doing some really messed up shit with his kid. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, I like you even less now. Congratulations. Poor guy. All he gets cast as is a bad guy. Listen, all right, I get it. All right, short king who's bald. It's a little bit tough to think of things that he could play. But I'm sure we can find him a position in a Marvel movie. Anyway. So, one day Henry is at school and sees the neighbor's kid, right? The chief of police's kid. And chief of police's kid is sad. So what does Henry do? Henry does not compute out of the situation. Henry does not go, I'm going to begin an investigation. Henry stops into the principal's office 
and pulls what I can only describe as the renegade, you know, renegade undercover cop kicking in the door of the chief of police's office or his captain's office. And he literally says, damn it, Janice, how much longer is this going to have to go on? I was waiting for the principal to be like, you're suspended, you're expelled, hand in your gun and your badge. Like, I was waiting for something. But Janice is just all like, oh, well, I can't do anything about it. You know, we can make calls and stuff. But, oh, spoiler alert, the chief of police, yeah, his his his, his cousin or brother or something is the head of DCF in town. So what are we going to do? If you were a smart, if you if you were leaning more towards the 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 Benedict Cumberbun of it all, you know, if you were a little bit more Benny Crumple Cakes, you would investigate. You know what I'm saying? You would you would invest a little bit of time and effort in discovering those things that you needed to in order to oh oh and and we're led to believe that's what happens. He starts carrying around a recorder and he's got a red notebook and he starts making notes and he he goes to a gun dealership and he takes notes and then he goes near the river and he takes notes and he's doing all of this stuff, right? I mean, the very least the kid could have done is decide that he was gonna Batman the fucking situation. And if he was going to Batman the situation, like, you have options, child. But also, he wakes up in the middle of the night with a bloody nose. And you're like, oh, oh no, I hope he's, you know, could be fucking sinuses that time of year. But, but it's ominous. All right, so he starts doing his investigation, or that's what we think it is, wink. Mom keeps working part-time at the diner, keeps insisting to the kid that they're fine financially. Right? Harry continues to be an asshole to his mother and his mother's best friend, who honestly, you know what? You know what? One, your mother survived being manhandled by King Kong without giving permission. All right? Lost your father, you know, whether at sea or from illness. Who's to say? And then your mother's best friend has to deal with the fact that the lead singer, Tenacious D, is crashing in their living room and has been for God knows how long. Probably keep doing it until he becomes a teacher at a school of rock. But anyway, so fucking, fucking, okay. The kid, kid starts to, Henry starts doing all this stuff, right? Henry starts doing all these things. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, he's gathering information in order to take care of the situation, right? And he's, 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 he's gathering and he's gathering. And then all of a sudden, one night, he has a seizure and it's awful. And as a parent, you know, you got that moment. You're like, oh my God, something uncontrollable is happening with my kid. And that's tragic. Okay. And they go to the hospital and Henry proceeds to explain his brain to the doctor who is Legolas is dead. Listen, okay, kid. Okay. If you're gonna fucking explain your illness to anybody, do it to somebody who has not been alive so long that he has one health kit and he ran a pie shop, right? And he's eventually going to become the emperor of mankind. All right? Don't, don't fucking do it. It's an insult. It's an insult. All right? Let the doctor doctor you kid. All right? Those are, yeah, yeah. Even if you're going to fucking Batman in a situation when you're supposed to be kidding, I need you to pick a fucking lane, child. All right? Pick a fucking lane. But... Anyway, he discusses his diagnosis. He 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 tells the doctor what it is that's wrong with him. Okay, cool. And then, jump cut. Now, I don't want to be a guy who sits here and says to you, oh, this is how you should have made your fucking movie. Here's the thing. If you had taken that opportunity and gone, he's racing against the clock in order to, in order to build the case against the neighbor... Like, while while dealing with an inoperable brain tumor? And I get it, you know? Rear window with a kid. Oh, yeah, okay. But here's the problem. You don't like the kid. Fine. Okay, you could have done that. You could have done that. Oh, also, also, fucking kid's got a brain tumor, right? Inoperable brain tumor. Mother's like, oh, my God, we got to deal with the brain tumor. Kid's, kid's sitting there telling his mother what to do. I'm like, motherfucker. Just shut up. Shut up. All right. But anyway, jump cut. 
jump cut. Henry is dead. Now, here's the thing. We don't see a funeral. We don't, we don't have the whole he's dying, he's dying, he's dying thing. No, just all of a sudden we jump ahead, right? Mom, Blondie is sad. I understand grieving for a child. Okay. You know, you have the little brother who's trying to come to terms with it. Every so often, you know, her best friend comes over and, and it, she goes to work. You know, she's still working part-time at the diner. Life is life, right? Life is life. And you try to move on in those situations. This is a horrifying situation to deal with. But you know what you don't expect in the aftermath of the loss of a child? For your smaller child to come across a tape recorder and a journal, which is detailing the way in which you're supposed to murder the next door neighbor. Let's let that sit for a second, shall we? Because what Henry was doing, instead of organizing a case against the next door neighbor, that fucker who, who tried to catch, you know, who tried to catch what the fuck is the fucking guys from Breaking Bad, I don't fucking know. Anyway, instead of organizing a case against them, he has set up a Rube Goldberg ask plan to murder the neighbor so that the neighbor's daughter can come live with Blondie has faked the paperwork <laughs> has faked the paperwork so that Blondie will get custody after the neighbor is dead and thus begins the portion of the movie where a mother in grief stricken by the loss of a child proceeds oh, to plan the murder of the chief of police of the town on the ex the exacting orders of her child who has died now henry from the from the bed at the hospital, arranged for all the money to mo be moved into her checking account that he was making on stocks. She's worth like a fat stack. Fine. He also bought her a car because he constantly is making fun of the car that she owns because the car is fine. But for some reason, Henry insists that she needs a newer car. Listen, kid, I am again, you're supposed to be fucking smart. And yet somehow you adhere to the consumerist system. I'm not saying, listen, you're not fucking bright, all right? Anyway, so Blondie starts taking instructions from the kid in his journal and the tapes that he left. And oddly enough, every single time, every step that he describes is hinged on exacting detail, right? You're going to shoot him using this rifle that you're going to pick up from this gun store that you are going to get by rattling off the name of this local crime boss. Hey, here's a nutty fucking idea, kid. Talk to the fucking crime boss about killing him. You've got more than half a million dollars. I'm sure he'd be willing to take care of it for you. I digress. Mom, go pick up a high-powered sniper rifle with a silencer and this particularly brain-splattering set of ammunition. Fine. She does it. On instructions left by her son. You're going to dump his body into this creek. Again, on the slim possibility that the water level is high enough to hide a body. Because when he passed by it the first time, it doesn't really look like a creek you're going to drop a body in so much as it is a creek that you're going to drop a body into and they're going to find it tomorrow because it's just right there on the surface, on the rocks that are just covered by about an inch and a half of water. You're going to use the new car that you have in order to race home to do this murder, right? But you're going to keep the new car after the fact because no one will suspect. What? Child, what? Again, exacting details. This kid's like, you get, it's all going to fall right in place. The whole thing is hinged on the fact that there is a, there is a talent show coming up 
that we don't even know if Henry was interested in because we've obviously seen that Henry doesn't give a fuck about school, right? He's just there and he aces everything, but he's a shit about it. So you're kind of like, okay, well, does he even know that this would happen? Like, w w w this hinges on... And somehow, not only does he know that it, the, the talent show was going on, that he knows the schedule of the talent show, so he knows exactly how much time his mother's going to have in order to slip away from the talent show, murder the neighbor, and come back. Also, the neighbor's kid is in the talent show, so you're assuming that the neighbor's not going to go to the talent show, even though his daughter's in the talent show? There's a lot of details that just, you're kind of going, oh, this is like if one thing went too far left or too far right, it's all fucked and gone, kid. But, but Blondie, when not, corresponding with Kong and hanging out with, the, with her girlfriend, who is trying desperately not to lose her mind since the lead singer in Tenacious D is crashing in the living room and working her part-time job at the diner, even though she's worth quite a bit of money. She proceeds to get all of this ready, all right? And Peter, and apparently also raising Peter in the midst of this, because you do have another child. But it's say, oh, my God, oh, my God, and I missed the best part. I missed the best part. Peter's the one who says, maybe I did mention it, but perhaps in my insanity, I have forgotten. Peter's the one who informs her that Henry wants her to kill the neighbor. Because he's the one who finds the stuff. The recorder in the notebook. The Red Ledger. Which apparently our new suburban Black Widow is going to start adding names to. Maybe she did it in the past. Listen, I don't know what she's been doing since the 1920s. And now, I mean, she's been a lot of moms in other fucking media. But who's to say, all right? Maybe somewhere along the way, she did a couple of jobs. Perhaps for the fucking crime boss... For, of the fucking neighborhood who you could have hired to kill the fucking... Mm, 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 mm. We haven't even gotten to the fucked up part. All right, so... You got the night of the talent show, right? And mom's got a high-powered sniper rifle with brain-splattering ammunition. She's got a new car. So everything's set up. She's got to coordinate off of a watch, which the tape recorder tells her to do, right? Everything's get up. Oh, 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 oh. And Peter, Peter, Peter <sighs> invited Dr. Legolas' dad to come because he's like, listen, I don't want to be that guy, but like, I've seen pictures of my dad, the old, the old sea captain, right? He had a very, he had a very distinct look to him and you know you know dr legolas is dead he looks looks a little similar you know tall dark handsome you know pretty good looking so peter invites you know dr legolas is dead to come and watch watch the talent show right so the talent show starts and blondie pops out right starts listening to the recorder starts timing the thing does the whole motions Gets to the house again. And as luck would have it, or as the person who wrote the film would have it, the, the, the chief of police is still at home. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He is, in fact, at home. He stayed. He stayed while his daughter went to the talent show to do her talent act. And so, oh, what a stroke of luck this is. And so she, the whole plan here hinges on the following. That she goes and hides in a treehouse that the kids had in the woods and attract the chief of police with radio sounds out into the woods. Hope to God he's not watching a loud movie, listening to some music, taking up a podcast, taking a nap. Like, no. All right. So he gets attracted by the mysterious sounds in the woods and he wanders out into the woods. And the mother's there with a high-powered sniper rifle with brain-splattering ammunition listening to the tape and all of a sudden has a moment of revelation and goes, wait a second. The kid who was shitty to me is now telling me that I should kill the neighbor. 
Mayhaps I should not take this route. Mayhaps I should go another course. Does she wait to get down? No. She takes the sniper rifle, she climbs out of the treehouse, and she confronts them. If you were the chief of police and you see your neighbor holding a high-powered sniper rifle with a silencer, which aren't very legal in most states, wouldn't you just, I don't know, stop for a minute and think to yourself, hey, maybe I'm going to need to see papers for that gun. Blondie says to the chief of police, I know what you've been doing, Glenn. And you're like, okay. What? Like, okay, cool. Now, there's two details I need to tell you before I get to the grand finale of this fuck up of a movie. All right? One, during the whole race against time thing, they keep juxtaposing Blondie's Race Against Time with a fucking kid singing, um, what was it? Uh, fucking, oh, um, Amazing Grace, right? So it's very fucking, it's like, it's like an homage to the fucking Godfather thing, like the baptism scene. And you're kind of like, oh, this is cute what you're doing. That's one thing that's going on at the talent show. I haven't gotten to the fucked up conclusion. All right. That's one thing that's going on at the talent show. The next thing that we see going on at the talent show is that the neighbor's daughter is doing a sad dance. All right. And Janice, the, 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 the chief of police, captain of police, also principal, right? Watches sad dance and goes, this is my breaking point. This is the moment that I will contact the authorities and say that this child is being wronged by her parent. And so she gets on the phone. All right. So we have Blondie, right? High powered sniper rifle decides I'm not going to do this. My fucking kid is crazy. What the fuck was I thinking to begin with? All right. Grief makes you do some weird stuff. I don't know if it will make me possibly shoot the chief of police, but whatever. Ha! <sighs> she goes back to the talent show, right? She goes back to the talent show. Chief of police goes back in his house, gets a phone call, picks it up. Okay, cool. Just pfft, himself, right? Unalives himself. All right? So obviously, somehow, the, the, whether it be Janice or somebody else, something now has finally changed enough in this course of one evening that it's like, okay, we can investigate. Okay, so that all happens, all right? The talent show is still going on, right? Dr. Legolas' dad is there. Blondie is there, right? The whole town is there. And Peter, Henry's little brother, gets up on stage and goes, I'm going to perform a magic act. All right? Now, cool. But he goes, when I am, I, I, when I am done, he rolls out a stream of trunk, right? Rolls out a stream of trunk. He goes, when I am done, my brother, Henry, will be here with us. Now you're thinking to yourself, fuck, I didn't see a funeral. What if he faked his death? And you're going, shit, I don't know exactly what's about to happen, but it would be a really interesting third act of this actual fucking like horror show of a fucking movie up until this point. This would be a really interesting point at which everything could deviate, right? Well, oh, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe Peter does know something. Maybe Henry, maybe Henry was a necromancer. Maybe, maybe he taught Peter how to resurrect him. Maybe his corpse is in the box. Again, a lot of fucked up options when it comes to this steamer trunk on the, on the stage. You're going, okay, okay. Knowing how close, you know, Henry was walking that genius psychopath line. I don't like to throw that around, but... Yeah, how close Henry was walking that line. 
what if PETA got a little bit? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, he's going to like flip the steam trunk and like Henry's just going to flop out on a stage like a dead fish. I don't know. Okay. And this is, this is the messed up part you're at. You're just sitting there going, I can't see into the steam trunk, kid. Oh my God, what's in the steam trunk, right? And he opens his, Henry, Henry, are you here? And all of a sudden, stuff starts flying out of the steam trunk, right? Stuff that rains over the entirety. Oh, oh, it's falling all over the place, right? It's getting on all of the, and I can't take credit for the next part because I saw this and I thought to myself, okay, this is really, this is dumb. Like, oh, is it supposed to represent his spirit? Is it, he touched all of our lives? Like, what is the, I cannot take credit for the analysis of this moment because I saw this in another video, but I am going to call back to it because this imagery will never leave my head ever again. We never saw Henry's body. We never saw a tomb for Henry. Maybe Henry was going to pop out of the box alive. Maybe Henry's dead body was going to be in there, flop out on the, the, the stage like a fish. Instead, things, flakes, flakes are being shot out across the entirety of the theater. And as someone else on a different channel stated, there is a heavy implication that it is Henry's ashes. Oh, fucking boy. So... <laughs> Talent show over. Everybody excited. Nobody thinks about the fact that they might be covered in, you know, remains. No, nah, no. Nah. Blondie and Peter go home. I would be imagining at this point that Blondie has gotten, you know, Legolas' dad's phone number and is going to be writing Kong, informing, informing Kong that he is going to, that she has met somebody else, at which point Kong is going to get pissed off and engage in all of those movies that have been coming out lately that star him. Because you know what? I understand. I do. I understand. You were into a girl, and the girl just doesn't see you like that, and there's a little bit of anger there, and you've got to resolve that issue. So yeah, so Ang goes on a little bit of a rampage, and I get that, because Kong did that in a couple of movies, and at one point was dealing with Captain Marvel, right? And then fucking, fucking now is dealing with Godzilla, and it's still, it's, it's festering, you know? And eventually, who's to say? Maybe, maybe Kong will find a girlfriend. You know, it's not going to be, you know, hopefully of his own, a little bit closer to his own dimensions as opposed to Blondie because that's not going to work. But you know what? I understand, okay? I understand. Right. So Blondie goes home with Peter, right? And has probably gotten the number of Legolas is dead. And next door neighbor's kid arrives home to find ambulances and cop cars. All right, things, it, it, the dad isn't there anymore, right? The dad pfft, himself, that's fine, okay? Well, I mean, it's not fine. It's a horrible situation. The whole thing was a horrible situation. You know what I'm getting at. Anyway, this torturous movie then reveals to you that without any must fuss or any issues, right? That next door neighbor, Next door neighbor's daughter is now living with Blondie and Peter, right? And and she has a she has a nickname. And they're all fine and everything's dandy and everything's great. And it ends with with Blondie putting the two kids to bed. Probably going downstairs to play Gears of War with 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 uh, Tenacious Deedly Singer's uh, 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 apartment roommate's girlfriend and shit. Who's to say? And you sit there and you go to yourself, this certainly was a film. And I sat through that fucking film and I went, oh my God, this is awful. And I'm sitting there going to myself, you know what? There's so many holes in this. I don't understand. And then you go back and you, you find out about the movie. Because I sat there and every single time I get upset at a movie, I do research. Because I'm like, what? what was it about this movie that didn't make sense? First off, the script was over 10, 11, 12 years old. And the guy who wrote the script in in interviews said, I threw out the rule book when it came to writing scripts. And you're like, maybe you should get the rule book back, buddy. Maybe you should get it back. It's like, I started writing this when I was, I was in college. Oh, oh, good. 
Fantastic. That's usually the way you want to go about things. And I've been working on it ever since. Ooh, tooling with it for God knows how many years. Oh, that's fantastic. And then the director of the movie was the guy. Okay, in this next part, I'm going to keep doing this as allegedly. The guy was big because he had done the Jurassic World movie, you know, and he did Jurassic World 2. And he was slated to do Star Wars Episode 9. And then oddly enough, Book of Henry came out at Sundance. And I'm not sure, okay? I'm not sure, all right? No one will say for certain. But here's the thing. When you release a movie at a festival, and it does so poorly that in the next week or two it gets uh, imparted to the, the press that you are no longer going to be writing and directing the next Star Wars movie, Star Wars Episode Nine. You know, you, you don't want to imply that there are dots to connect, but I'm going to tell you right now, this movie would have made me not want to hire the guy either. That being said, I have read this, his script for Star Wars Episode Nine, and that in and of itself was, while at times had some good points, it was questionable at best. So yeah, that's the Book of Henry. Thank you for making me relive that. All you wonderful people. Thanks to the gaggle of callers, which apparently wanted to do me bodily harm. I did it, okay? And now we will talk about what movie we're going to do next week. And I hope to God, I swear to you, if it's something else that makes me physically violent, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, in an effort to make sure that I never had to take a call in again, I've decided to take the suggestions of the general populace, add them into this raffle, and we will see where we go from here. Are you ready? My doom is sealed by the randomness of artificial intelligence. Let's see where we go. Oh, Lord, pray for me. Next week's episode will be about... The Movie Aliens by James Cameron. All right. Okay. That one's going to be a good one. All right. That's a good movie with a great cast. You know, it's going to be... It's going to be tough to talk about, you know, how you went from working girls to fucking space. But we'll get there. You know, we'll get there. I believe in us. All right. So I'm going to go try to emotionally recover from this episode. And I'll, I'll see you later. All right. Okay. So this has been Uncle Nicky for Who the Fuck Cast That Guy. Until next time, you know, don't listen to psychotic masterminding kids with red ledges. Just don't do it. I don't, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but I feel like it's a life lesson I'm going to have to teach in this moment. <laughs> so, ooh, yeah, you know, you're the new hot shit in Hollywood, right? Oh, Colin Trevorrow, you're going to remake cinema. You know, you're picking up where Spielberg left off. Oh, we, we think that you did pretty well with Jurassic World, so we're going to let you have a Star War. Fine, so we're going to give you number nine. Here's the fucking deal, okay? Jedi, The Last Jedi, right? Written by Ryan Johnson, you know, which I personally think is one of the better ones, okay? It comes out... And everybody's like, oh, this is divisive. It's 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 not what we're used to. Oh, my God, change. Ah! You know what? Fuck you guys, all right? Because here's the thing, all right? It has to evolve. It has to grow up. At some point, we have to look at this as a way of going about things. And then fucking, fucking Colin Trevorrow does his shitty movie, right? And they're like, you know what? Maybe we don't want you to do a Star Wars. And that's fine. Okay, so guess what? Guess what? Like, after the whole thing goes down, what do they do? They leak his script, all right? The script that was titled Star Wars Episode Nine: Duel of the Fates. And if you think calling it Duel of the Fates is tongue-in-cheek and fan service, oh, wait, buddy, because it gets so much more. Like, it is, it is something, all right? So here's the deal, right? 
Okay, in his version, right, she's wearing she's wearing the Chanel black leather boot outfit. Like, right, is wearing the Chanel black leather boot outfit that fucking, that fucking uh, uh, Skywalker Luke was wearing in Return of the Jedi. Oh, we're just going to do everything as a callback. Oh, she's now wielding a two-ended lightsaber. Okay, that might have been interesting. All right, she modified her staff. To make it to a lightsaber. Guess what? She does at the end of the original Rise of Skywalker. And listen. I am not anybody who is ever going to sit here and say to you. Guess what? Rise of Skywalker is amazing. Alright? It's okay. It is what it is. Alright? It ended nine movies that needed to end. Okay? And that's the way I look at it. The whole thing. The whole thing. Kind of sort of takes mostly place. On the fucking Coruscant. Which is, which is the planet where the Jedi Temple was and where the Seat of Galactic Power is and where now fucking um, uh, 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 mopey, uh, emo, uh, Darth Vader uh, uh, grandson. Oh, fucking uh, Kylo Ren. He's now supposed to, he's, he's ruling on this, supposed to be ruling on this planet, right? All right. But he's not there, right? He's now, he's, he's. He's on Darth Vader's castle planet, right? On Mustafa, the place where, where Darth Vader got melted. Okay, again, pretty cool, right? All right, so now he's looking. He's also, however, Kylo is looking for an like a, a, a source of power, right, called Mortis. Again, going to make a lot of Star Wars fans very excited because this is the Clone Wars. In the Clone Wars cartoon, right, Mortis was where, like, the Force kind of originated or it had a wellspring, right? Okay, cool. And he's being haunted by, he's being haunted by Luke Skywalker's ghost. All right. Also, pretty cool, right? Okay. The, 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 we, we, we got some pretty cool setup here. Here's the problem. All right. Here's where you start getting problematic. So automatically, automatically, what do you do? You see, you see that there's this, this connection, right? First of all, first of all, first of all, okay. A lot of things that get called back, and that's fine. All right, you're doing callbacks. Everybody likes a good callback, especially when it comes to this shit. But here's my problem, okay? Now you've got like you got the General Hux character, who apparently has spent the entire time being a Jedi fanboy. Okay, cool. Yeah, you don't do the whole thing with the Emperor, but at the same time, you have these like hackneyed connections that have absolutely no grounds whatsoever, right? Now we've got oh, oh, Ray's supposed to be into Poe. Okay, which there was never any implication that that was going to go down. Right, but now, but now you're supposed to imply it. Okay, and there's a ground wall, which is very Les Miserable, um, on Coruscant. Okay, that's a thing. All right, I get it, I get it. But here's your other problem: you're gonna bring in this giant ugly puppet thing, right? At some point, is gonna be the educator for for Kylo, who's gonna end up learning that you can like suck the life out of other living things. Okay, so now you've you've made him even more dark and emo by making him fucking a vampire all right i yeah like it, and and there were some details to it okay that do makes up sense and that's fine but at the same time you just go and okay but there's also some stuff here that doesn't doesn't do well right like okay so at some point you know you got Ray touching base with all the other force and they go to mortis and it's like instead of realizing Instead of realizing that there's like this interconnection, instead of realizing it just it's more violence. And Ray ends up fading away and coming back later. And you're like, oh, she fell into the force at some point and she emerged later on. And it could have been decent. It could have been good. But there were also serious problems with the script. And you go and you're relying a little too heavily on the way that this all connects. General Hux at one point kills himself with a lightsaber. Right? Like, you end up having all of these things that, that basically, sure, you don't have the whole, you don't have the whole, um, issue that you had with fucking Palpatine, but at the same time, you've got, you've got no progression of the characters. Kylo doesn't grow, he just delves deeper and deeper and deeper into darkness. You know, you had an implication at the end of The Last Jedi that he was going to end up, you know, that there was conflict, right? You have that, you have that, okay, the two, the two sides of the same coin, you know, like Ray, 
Ray and Kylo, they're connected, but they're conflicted. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're linked, but they're separated. You know, the, you, you get that very well and impressioned, you know, stance. But at the same time, like there's none of that. There's just more depth, more darkness, more emo for Kylo. And then you got Ray, who's just like, now I'm with Poe because we have to we have to make this a straight relationship. Right. Which seems a little bit forced. But then fucking then Ray's like, I'm going to go off and I'm going to find Kylo. And Poe's like, I can't let you go by yourself because. yeah. <sighs> so what does Ray do in the Colin Trevorrow script, which I think is probably the biggest sin. And you guys can look it up and we could do a whole review on it if you want to at some point. I mean, I'm not saying that we should, because honestly, like I have mixed emotions like Listen, episode nine was never going to be good because there was never going to be a way that you were going to satisfy everything that needed to be done. But there were some radical ways you could have taken it in that would have that would have been very different and maybe would have been spiritual successes of Ryan Johnson's Last Jedi as opposed to just being like, oh, I'm going to fall back on everything that's an old trope. But the biggest sin that this movie this movie uh, 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 carry is off here is that Ray uses the force to force Poe to forget about her and go off and do other things. She uses the force to basically manipulate his mind and make him go do other things and, and so that she can go off and deal confront with Kylo. And you're like, no agency. Poe po just fiddle fiddle with the flyboy. Send him off on his merry way. That's fine. Like, oh my God. And, you know, it was just, I was just sitting there going, this script has so many problems. And, you know, who's got time to do a full analysis? I mean, I do, obviously. and But that wouldn't be something that I'd want to do for, to you guys just because I felt like doing it to you. Because I've put you through enough pain. I mean, fucking Booker Henry in and of his... Guys... Guys, you can't do, you can't, you can't, you can't make such heavy, oh, when your lead character is a kid that you can't, and that's another thing, fucking, book of, who was the lead character? Who was the lead character throughout the movie? Was it supposed to be Henry? His name's in the title, right? You kill him off, you kill him off by the beginning of the second act. Like, what, what? Look, what, okay, so... Are we now, are we now, is this Henry's ghost? Who's the lead character? Like, I, it doesn't, oh my God, it was so badly handled. And it was such dark material for like a movie. And you know what's really funny? If you look it up on any of the platforms, it's listed as a intense crime drama. You lead as a kid! Like, if you're going to make it about the mother... Make it about the mother. Switch the switch the whole thing around. Make the first act about the mother raising the kids. And then make the second act about the mother discovering who her son was and all the stuff that he did. And, and this really, like, weird psychological mess that he left in his wake. Like, they don't do that. No. Because we follow Henry first act. Primarily, it's about Henry. It's the book of Henry. Right? She ends up becoming, and, and I'm not even going to take an opportunity and talk to you about the biblical implications here, because holy shit, Book of Henry, Book of Henry, Book of Henry, really. You know what? You know what Blondie, Henry, and Peter's last name is? Shepherd. Do you want to make this any more, any more heavy-handed? Because I don't. I don't think it will do any of us any fucking good. I, it just, it, oh my God, it's such a, it's so... It's so difficult. So do me a favor, all right? Do me the favor of never doing yourself the favor of watching this fucking film because it will it will do damage to your brain. And I I I mean, you know what? Maybe maybe I was just maybe I went into it wrong. You know? Maybe I saw it and and something about it just did not set right. And that's possible. But like here's the thing. When a movie goes so far off the fucking rails that you have to look at it and go, you know what, even the trailer, fucking, even the trailer, just like, does the whole thing dirty, right? Even when that just sits wrong with you, 
you just got to say to yourself, okay, something about this tone, something about, like, and I, I, you guys know I'm not like a Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes kind of guy, but it has a meta score of 31, okay? It did not make its money back and then some. It was, there was just so much wrong. And you're just going, okay, like, the, <laughs> it just don't. Do, do do me the favor, all right? Do me the favor. Do me the favor and don't do yourselves any favors by watching this film, okay? Okay. <sighs> Forehead kiss, headbutt, bear hug, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Kiss, kiss. <laughs>